Uh, but yeah, let me uh, start with real fears, real concerns from families and relatives uh, in care homes. Uh, care homes across the country, uh, they're worried, they're claiming that these homes are adopting their own bizarre rules, if you like, off the back of uh, rising COVID cases, off the back of uh, the spread of the Omicron variant, which is preventing them from seeing their loved ones this Christmas. Families say they're desperate, desperate to see their loved ones after, you know, a tough 18 months, tough year. Uh, but distraught families are saying that if this doesn't happen, if they're not able to see their loved ones in care homes again, they'll face a second heartbreaking year of not being able to see ailing families. And what, what does this mean for, for people living in, in care homes? How crucial is it for them to see their relatives? And if that happens, how does this impact them? But then at the same time, you need to protect them. You need to protect those in care homes considered vulnerable. So how do you fight? How do you strike that? that balance. Uh, let's speak to Diane May, who's co-founder of Rights for Residents and joins me now. Uh, Diane, what is going on here in, in terms of care homes? Because there aren't any hard or fast rules in terms of what they should be doing when it comes to seeing families and loved ones over the Christmas period. So, so what's going on? What are some care homes doing? Well, hi, Claudia. Thank you for right. having me on. Um, the government have, have been quite clear, actually, in, in their guidance to care providers that uh, because of the Omnium, uh, Om Omicron variant, um, visitors should be restricted to three named visitors okay. and an okay. essential visitor who can visit more frequently. But unfortunately, for many care providers who weren't following the guidance in the first place, this would have to be a huge leap, leap forward. Um, and then... Combined with this, we now hear that many care providers are just preventing visits over Christmas for so many different reasons. It's unbelievable. And when you consider that these residents have been locked away now, coming up for 19 months, and they are facing yet another Christmas, the second Christmas run-in, without the opportunity to see those that they hold dear, those that they love. What, what, reasons, what, what reasons are care homes giving? in stopping well, um, loved ones seeing their, their relatives in care homes? I, the Omicron is being banded about as the main reason, but as we now know, um, there's evidence to show that the Omicron is milder than we first thought. We now know that from yesterday's news that the vaccine and booster offer a higher level of protection. Um, and, you know, care providers are saying, well, we've got an outbreak in the home when they've only actually had one person test positive. That doesn't constitute an outbreak. Mm -hmm. Uh, I saw uh, the um, vice chair of the NCA being interviewed this morning saying that they could only allow relatives in uh, via a screen and a pod, which is like a zoo type of viewing. It, it's absolutely horrendous and there's no need for it. It's unnecessary. And the thing is, Claudia, that I don't know if you're aware of this, but there was a recent report by Oxford scientists at the weekend showing the huge number of excess deaths, not from COVID, but from it's being linked to visiting restrictions specifically because people have just given up the will to live and they've just yeah, died of loneliness and isolation. No, no, I have seen that. Are we, are we so sure though that when it comes to Omicron, indeed, uh, research showing that it is, it does look, you know, forty percent, maybe even up to seventy uh, percent milder compared to the Delta variant. However, are we sure about what the statistics are when it comes to those who are vulnerable, when it comes to those who are older? Well, the thing is, Claudia, that, you know, it is inevitable that the, the virus is going to get into care homes because since Freedom Day, when all restrictions in the community were lifted, then, you know, whether it's staff that take it in or a visitor, transmission comes from the community and there are no restrictions in the community. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like carers are doing a fantastic job, but at the end of the day, they've got husbands that go to work. They've got children that go to school. So they pose just as much risk as, as a visitor would. And what we're talking about is sensible, safe visiting. Mm -hmm. We're not asking for a party. We're not asking to go into a communal gathering. We're talking about literally following all the infection control measures, donning the PP. Don't forget that the majority of residents and relatives have been triply vaccinated. 
and they're wearing PPE, they're testing before they go in, they're taking temperature checks. So, you know, if they are literally just going directly into their loved one's room, then the risk is minimal. Mm. And we've got to also consider the risk of these vulnerable people who may be facing their last Christmas. Do we really think it's appropriate to do that without their family? So when you say there's some sensible measures that can be in place to make sure that those living in care homes are best protected, what, what are those measures? What, what do you think should be in place? Well, they are in place already. You know, relatives, if you're an ECG, an essential visitor, you take a PCR test because you're treated the same as the staff. So you take that weekly. You take an LFT test every time you visit. Um, you wear full PPE, you have a temperature check. As I said, the majority of relatives and residents have already been triply vaccinated. So there are no more mitigating measures that we can take now. You know, the Prime Minister's told us all we've got to learn to live with it because you know, if it's not Omicron, there's going to be another variant. So what's the alternative? We just lock people away forever. You know, we are fully aware that care has added awful time mm -hmm. and nobody's disputing that i can't imagine what they went through but we're not talking about those times now we've moved on we know a lot more about the virus my dad died of covid in april 2020 so and i sorry. never got a chance to say goodbye to him you know it haunts me every day he was but in a care home is, it wasn't it was in hospital oh, but gosh, sorry, you know sorry. at that point Claudia, the virus was rife. We didn't know anything about it then. We didn't have vaccines. We didn't have infection control measures. And as heartbroken as I was and my family, we had to accept that it, it was unsafe. You know, and we were so grateful to the NHS for being there, as we were to carers when we couldn't be. But we're not talking like for like anymore. We're talking almost 19 months on when we've got all these other safety precautions. It's unnecessary. There's no point just looking at the risk of COVID only. There are other risks to vulnerable people mm. like dying of loneliness yeah. and isolation. I was going to ask Diane, uh, just going back to the, the point you were making in, uh, in that research about the impact loneliness being by yourself this isolation that we've been forced into is, is having on people uh, what do families tell you about how this is impacting their loved ones in care homes not being able to see to see their own family during a time like christmas it, it you know it's all the time not just christmas because even before Omic omicron came about you know many care providers were refusing to follow guidance so many Can people they do that yeah, because it's guidance only, it's advisory, not mandatory. That's why we want this to be made legal. So you've got some people who are literally only getting a 15 minute visit if they can book in, you know, at a time when they're not fully booked. So, but to go back to your question, Claudia, it is affecting residents. It's unbelievable. They are deteriorating so fast. If you imagine that you're in lockdown, people in society struggle just with the pandemic and being locked down, you know, but we were still able to go out and get fresh air. We could still make our own choices. We had family within the home. Most people did, you know, but we still struggled. These people are confined to a tiny room. Many have got dementia. They can't choose what they want to watch on telly. They can't read a book. So, you know, in our own situation, Jenny, my partner, her mum lost the power of speech. She stopped eating and drinking. She didn't know us at the end. It is having such a huge impact on the mental health and well-being. But it's not just of the resident. Many of our members are undergoing therapy and they're on antidepressants because they cannot cope with this situation where they feel that they've abandoned their loved one. You know, nobody puts someone into a care home lightly and nobody stops caring for them just because they have. But that's what's happened. And, and there's nothing, the... there's nothing families can do if, if indeed a care home isn't following any of this guidance. There, there's, there's nowhere they can, families can go. Well, we've reported many cases to the CQC, you know, and in some cases, the, the larger care operators. 
to be honest, the larger care providers, uh, I mean, I, I won't name and shame, but one particularly large care provider banned all visits for 10 days just as a precaution. There were no outbreaks in the home. And he's now said that, um, you know, they can go in, an ECG can go in uh, and one name visitor. That is not in the guidance. You know, and these pods and screen visits are supposedly just for outbreaks and many care providers are using them as the norm. When you've got someone who's blind or deaf or they can't communicate through a screen, seriously, it is inhumane and it is just so cruel. And the CQC has said that they will, you know, possibly... Uh, enforce a, or trigger an inspection but there's not really it's not within their power to do anything so, so um Di- briefly if you can what are you calling on the government to do what needs to be changed here we want the government to listen to what we're telling them because although the guidance is clear the care providers are not following it because it's advisory so they need to step in and have the courage of the convictions and legalize this guidance if they really believe that it's safe for people to have three visitors and an ecg then why can't that be legalized okay good luck with this i think it's outrageous i just can't even imagine not being able to see somebody who i I love so dearly somebody i'm trying to care for to look after them and I couldn't get access to that. Good luck with everything. And that's Diane Mayhew, co-founder of Rights for Residents. Let me know what you think on that. Is it right for care homes to do the best that they think they should be doing when it comes to protecting those who are living in care homes from, from COVID, from the Omicron variant? Or is it the family members, the loved ones, that they should get priority here? That's what they should be focusing on, doing all that they can do to make sure that they can that they can visit them, particularly uh, during Christmas, 0344 uh, After the break, uh, we're going to be talking about what's being touted as the answer for dealing with the migrant crisis over the English Channel. Tagging migrants 